Thank you, Mr. Secretary It's a pleasure to be here. Let me ask you to begin with, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, was just on CNN, and he says, quote, I'd like to see the UN, the UN Secretary General, who basically laid the blame on Israel, lay the blame on these savages, to demand that they obey international law because Israel is fighting according to international law. What is your reaction? Well, that's simply not true. I mean, when you are in the UN and you face a situation that is as horrible and as messy as this is, you must stick to principles. And uh, since the very beginning, I have condemned Hamas. What Hamas did is horrific. Terror attacks, slaughtering women and children. And I've been very clear in the condemnation of Hamas. But there is a basic principle for me, is that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. And you need to be able to distinguish Hamas from the Palestinian people. And so you cannot use the horrific things that Hamas did as a reason for a collective punishment of the Palestinian people. And then there is a second dimension that I believe is very important. And what I've been saying has been completely distorted. Uh, and I've been saying there are grievances of the Palestinian people. Of course there are. You we said, let me quote you, you said, the, it's important to recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. So tell us what, the, what is the context? Of we course need to... there are grievances. Grievances related to 56 years of occupation and the settlements being constructed, the um, uh, evictions, uh, the, the, the progressive lack of hope of the Palestinian people that there will be a two-state solution. But I, in the same sentence I said, but none of these grievances justify the barbaric attack of Hamas. And it's very interesting because when this is commented by the Israeli government or the ambassador or whatever, they put the first part of the sentence, but they take out the second part of the sentence. And obviously, the barbaric attacks of Hamas do not justify the collective punishment of the Israeli people. And, and the grievances of the Palestinian people do not justify the barbaric attacks of Hamas. We must stick to principles. Do you believe, and another principle, yeah, if I may, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the face of God, the life of any person has the same value, be it American, Portuguese, Israeli, or Palestinian. Do you believe that the, the siege, uh, cutting off food, electricity, fuel, and these bombardments, this is effectively collective punishment of 2.2 million people? The truth is that we have witnessed in the Israeli response in Gaza unrelented bombardments, and we are seeing a dramatic number of civilian casualties. And the international humanitarian law is clear. International humanitarian law forbids to take hostages, and I strongly, strongly appeal for the immediate and unconditional release of hostages by Hamas. And I've always been very clear on that. International humanitarian law says that human shields should not be used by parties. And I strongly condemn the fact that Hamas uses human shields. But international humanitarian law also gives a primacy to the protection of civilians. And this is what is not happening. You mentioned the graveyard of children, that, that, I, uh, that expression that I used. Now, as uh, you probably know, Every year, I publish a report about children killed and maimed and I mean, used the victims of conflict. And the countries that do it are listed. Um, and this usually generates a polemic. Remember uh, uh, the past situations of Saudi Arabia, of Israel, of Russia, etc. Now, in the seven years I've been Secretary General, in the reports that have been presented, the maximum number of children killed during one year by any party to the conflict was about 600. 600 by the Taliban in one of the years, 600 by the Syrian government and their allies in another of the years. If you remember the polemics about the uproar about the Saudi bombardments in, uh, yeah. uh, uh, in Yemen, 300 people in one year. Now, 
I'm not going to enter into discussions about the accuracy of the numbers provided by the de facto authorities that exist in Gaza, uh, but it is clear that the number of children killed in a few weeks in Gaza is in the thousands. Now, it is clear that the protection of civilians that is paramount in international humanitarian law is not paramount in the strategy that is being applied by the military operations in Gaza. Why do, you think the, why do you think the Israelis are not protecting, are not making that a primacy objective? I mean, because the logic has been in many situations to raise uh, neighborhoods, and I presume this is to facilitate the movement of troops or for any other reason. But the question is the protection of civilians that is required is not there. And then the second aspect in international humanitarian law is that you must guarantee unrestricted access to human have humanitarian aid to all areas where the conflict is taking place. And what we have seen until now is a drop by drop in the increase of humanitarian aid. Um, up to today, we have about 900 trucks uh, in these 22 days, 930-something trucks. Be before, in the past, there were 500 trucks every day supplying Gaza. You can imagine what this means in relation to water, in relation to medicine, in relation to food, in relation to... And fuel is not authorized. And that is why in many hospitals we have problems with um, uh, incubators, you have problems with uh, dialysis, uh, you have uh, uh, lack of anesthesia, and uh, uh, many other things that uh, transform uh, uh, this situation in really an extremely horrendous situation for the people of Gaza. And as I said, you cannot make a confusion between Hamas, that you must condemn, and the people of Gaza that you must protect. Uh, do you worry about an escalation uh, in Lebanon, in other places? I'm very worried. First of all, in the West Bank, where things are getting worse by the day and where uh, we are witnessing uh, uh, levels of violence that are extremely dangerous. But of course, the most complex situation that we face is in relation to Lebanon. We have been very active in doing everything we can with those that can have influence over uh, the parties, uh, both Hezbollah and Israel, to make sure that have you having the level Have of you spoken to Iran? Because they have a lot of... Influence. I have spoken to Iran, and uh, I, I've asked two things to Iran. One is to put pressure on Hamas to have the immediate and unconditional release of hostages, and second, to tell Hezbollah you cannot create a situation in which uh, 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 Lebanon will be completely engulfed by this conflict. Because if Hezbollah will launch a massive attack on Israel, it might create, I don't know what kind of impact, but one thing I'm sure, Lebanon would not survive. Do, do the Iranians seem responsive to that? I do not know. They did not? They, they said always that they have nothing to do with what is happening, but they say publicly that there is a risk of uh, um, this conflict to be extended. So, uh, I mean, uh, it's always very mysterious, uh, the position of Iran. But we have talked to Hezbollah, and we are in close contact with the Lebanese authorities, and, as I said, we must do everything to avoid to an escalation of the confrontation that would be a massive offensive of Hezbollah with a massive response of Israel in which Lebanon would be completely destroyed. Final uh, thought on, you have lost 100 UN employees in, uh, in 101 Gaza. 101. 101. As of today. Do, is it your sense that now, UN personnel are out of harm's way? No, on the contrary. The numbers are growing by the day. Uh, you can imagine what it is to run an organization in which 101 people that was working purely to help address the humanitarian needs of the people, 101 people being killed. And some of them killed with their families in their houses by bombardment. So this is very difficult for us. We will have uh, across the organization uh, uh, next Monday one minute of silence. Uh, our flags will be at half mast. Uh, but um, of course, I mean, 
I mourn all the Israelis that were killed by Hamas. I mourn all the Palestinians that are uh, dying. But as you can imagine, I mean, we are a family and, and we feel very dramatically those of our family that die. And you can imagine how difficult it is for me to tell our colleagues that they must go on in this very dangerous situation. Antonio Guterres, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure.